back at it here on this awesome accessory building and we've got a, a monster wraparound porch it's going to be gabled out it's going to be really cool so i'm going to try and take you through this process because i know on our last build i didn't really have the time or wasn't around to do that we've got all of our piers done those have all been poured a couple days ago kept them covered in insulation we've now come through and we've snapped our lines to define where our brackets go and that's what we're going to do right now we're going to get all these brackets installed this is the bracket we use it's a pretty simple bracket galvanized steel probably seen these they got a nice little base to keep the cedar post up off the ground and they'll get fastened in with some simpson titan hd bolts i love these things they're awesome they have amazing holding power so once we lay out all those brackets we'll go ahead and get them drilled in using the milwaukee sgs rotary hammer uh, with 5 8 bit it goes in pretty darn easy luckily we don't have to do a ton otherwise i'd want a corded rotary hammer i didn't show it but we went around with a laser and we measured our brackets from grade to get a dimension to cut these six by sixes with which i'm using the skill saw for Oh yeah, they tell you it was all running on the DeWalt power station. It's awesome. Got all of our brackets in. We got our post all cut off the laser. And we are ready to get these things installed. Just a nice little gentle snowfall. I love doing these cedar porches. They are, they're actually very, you know, easy to do. We've got them down to a science because this is kind of our style. They look really nice. So really it's a, it's a win-win. Pretty pumped to put them up. What we're doing now is we've gone and laid out all of our posts. We're leveling them up with the eight foot stabilo level and putting some smaller wood screws into the bracket. And once we build the porch and everything is where we like it, we'll come back through and we'll put some larger lag fasteners into the post. And then once we get them all stood up, we've already pre-cut all of our header six by sixes. And it's pretty easy because they're all eight foot on center. And then the corners, we've got to deal with a little bit of a miter. For the most part, we're just gonna put some three and a quarter inch framing screws into these on some toenails and then come back behind it with some eight inch lag screws that'll go all the way through into the post. And you'll see those two by sixes sticking out. Those are the bottom cord of our hand frame rafters. They're gonna also create our overhang. We got everything up, basically leveled out. We'll still straighten some things out when we Put a line on it you know with a post frame there could be some inconsistencies you know an eighth inch here or there from the bottom to the top which when we build the thing we're putting a string line down at the bottom so we know that's straight and we string the top we know that's straight if there's any sort of ins and outs in a 16 foot post it's going to happen there and it's going to be transferred out to the edge so what we'll do is we've gone in and we've put all these posts on our marks and then we'll run a string from that end to this end and cut them perfect and then we'll measure back 10 and a half inches or one foot for our overhang and that will determine this to make it perfectly straight post framing is unique in that aspect that we can't really string the middle of the wall and brace it off anything so we're we're kind of stuck with whatever it is up there and whatever it is down here the middle you know you hope it to be the best and you use the best materials that you can hopefully that makes sense it's gonna look awesome. What an awesome porch. Okay, so what I'm doing is basically cutting my rafters and I'm using a framing square with a 412 pitch. So I'm coming up four inch, 12 inch, and that's the pitch of my roof. So that'll give me my cutoff. Pitch, rise, three foot rise, four inch pitch, three inch one half run, three and eleven sixteenths, three foot minus three inch eleven sixteenths, so two foot eight, five sixteenths, rise, four inch pitch, eight, 
15, 16, diagonal 8, 6, 3, 6. All right, now that they're screwed together, go ahead, I can make one cut, and I should make it through all four. That's a 16 and 5 16 inch blade. I can gang cut four two buys at one time. So I just made up these rafters real quick. I got them marked for my purlin locations and they're all ready to go. So we'll go ahead, take these out to the porch and get them installed. At this point, pretty sure most people know that I hate ladders. I'd rather work off of a scissor lift all day, but uh, even my MRT 260 doesn't fit in here and allow me to do what I need to do at this point. Got the rafters up. I'm gonna work on this end rafter. And then I'll be able to start running my purlins, which I've already pre-made, pre-drilled, right where the 60 pennies are going to go. Marked my overhangs at the top. So I'll just start one bay at a time. I'll work them down. Got a little bit of melt coming off the roof, turning into some icicles. Yeah, it's the beauty of the winter work. Oh well, not the end of the world. It's better than snow. And I think they're calling for 7 to 12 inches of snow tonight. So I sent the guys home because they're probably going to get called in around dinner. And it looks like a 24-hour event. It's going to be slow moving. We're going to be doing a lot of snow shoveling in the next, next 24 hours, unfortunately. I got a lot done here by myself tonight. Snow's starting to come down. Gonna have to call it a quits. Got all my rafters, my bottom cords done, most of my purlins done. Tomorrow, if I get a chance, we'll come back, we'll string that line, we'll snap our fascia, do some more framing on this end, and then get all of our ceiling framing done so we can run that and sheet the roof. Like that'll be the next stage. 